Alright everyone, you've been asking for it, so we have here, doing the ATR harness for your GY6 motor swap. In the bag, you're going to get one ATR harness, that's all pre-labeled. You can get your GY6 coil, you can get your 5-pin rectifier, if you have an 11-pole stator, which we highly recommend, and your CDI. With this harness, we like to make it a little bit easier for people because it can look overwhelming, especially if this is all new to you. The smaller portion here is for the back half of the ruckus. What we're going to do is we're going to work from the back and make our way forward so you get comfortable as you go on throughout the uh, wiring. Alright. When you're Taking your stock ruckus parts off, there's certain things you're going to want to keep while doing this swap. You're going to want to keep your battery tray here, all three pieces, this the tray itself, this front piece. You want to keep this box if you intend on using your low fuel indicator light. On the side here, you have a resistor. You're going to want to keep that as well. And this side of the plate where the ECU mounts to. As far as wiring goes, you're going to remove all the ECU and wire harness. You're going to keep the ignition. Now on your stock harness, you can see here, there's two wires coming off the ignition. You usually want to cut those about 8 to 10 inches down, because you're going to be using these later to wire up into the ATR harness's ignition. Here's a better shot of the other side of the tray that you're going to keep that the ECU bolts to. You're going to keep the bolts for these as well, because you're going to be using those later. Here's the OEM resistor as well, um, which you'll need if you intend on using the low fuel indicator light. Alright, so let's get to the back half of the harness here. On this particular frame, this tab was still kept, and I'm going to actually use it for running the wires. It's going to be kind of helpful for me. So I'm just going to bring each piece in one at a time here. And this is the uh, brake lights. Just going to run it through and bring it back. Next I'm going to run the starter and the grounds through. One of our biggest questions is they see customers will see loose wires in here, not necessarily loose, but untagged ones. Um, the biggest thing to know is all the key wires are labeled. So everything that you're going to need to get this bike up and running are the label wires. ATR gives a lot of extra power and ground features uh, that I'll point out later on the harness. In the back, it's fairly simple. I'll go over it here. You're going to have two ground wires. It's going to be this thicker black one along with the thin green wire. I'm going to show you where to place these. You're going to have this green and black wire and it's going to be labeled for coil and that's going to go directly to your coil. You're going to have this long red wire that's going to say electric start and that's going to go to your starter engine. You're going to have the green with yellow it's going to be for your auto choke for your stock 24 millimeter carburetor. You're going to have this one here. This is going to plug right into your stator. Now a lot of people will cut this off and try hard wiring it. It's going to be a lot easier for you if you leave this clip on and plug it directly to your stator. And lastly, these are going to be the timing pickup wires for your stator. So the reason I like to start with the rear of the harness is because there's technically only three things that you're going to be bolting in to the back half of the frame. It's going to be your ground here, the thin ground and the thicker ground, and then your starter motor wire. Um, real quick, I'll go over this starter wire here. Your electric start is going to have a tab on it. This is a donor bike. So it's not, it does not have it, but you're going to have a red wire coming off of this 
with a tab, what you're going to want to do is cut this starter wire and put that tab on there so it's going to bolt directly to this fitting here. You'll see it's a square fitting and the one that comes with the motor already has a backing nut on the fitting and a little nut that goes through here, a bolt, and you'll be able to tighten it right up. It's going to make it a lot easier for you. You don't want to attach this one to the one on the engine, the starter motor, because it will fry it out. Okay, so our first ground that we're going to do is going to be to the back of the starter motor here. Now because this is a donor motor, it has Allen head bolts here. Normally what you're going to use is an 8mm socket, like so. What you're going to do is you're going to take the bolt off. Take the larger of the ground wires. And put it through like so. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is we're going to put the thinner green ground on and usually I like to put it to the valve cover right here. I'm just going to loosen this bolt and take it out. Now make sure if you paint your motor that you have these areas covered so that the grounds stay solid grounding and they don't get interfered by the actual paint. So you're going to put the bolt through. tighten like so. Next I'm going to take this starter wire and I'm going to run it down the frame here and underneath the motor mount. And you'll see it'll come out right here where the starter will bolt up to the wire. Now you'll know that you can cut and put the tab on and it's going to bolt right here and it's going to look really clean for when you go to tuck, like hide your wires down the road. Also, we're going to be doing that with this ground wire. The key thing I like to do is get the bike basically wired up for the, the meantime, get it running, and then once they find it, that everything's working and it's running, it's charging, then I'm going to go back and you'll tidy up everything in the rear and the front of the harness. Now that you have the starter and your two grounds all set in the back here, Normally, you'll have a manifold here that's going to be facing forward now. And you'll have a 24 millimeter OEM GY6 carb. This is the one that we highly recommend to use when you're getting your GY6 started. It's a cheap carb, as well as price goes. Um, it's very effective, and it's probably going to be the easiest one without having to worry about tuning or getting into the rejetting. So that would go about right here once the manifold's on and you'll have this clip right here there's going to be a green and a yellow wire that's going to be your electric choke on your harness there's going to be a green and yellow wire labeled choke you're just going to plug these two in and you got it next up we're going to be plugging in your stator with this one again just for cleanliness issues I like to run it under the mount here so I'm going to feed it through So, and you can see over here on the stator side, 
you don't have any wires out in the open, the tire's not going to be catching anything because they do give you a lot of slack on these. And that's why a lot of people cut this. They try to make it shorter and cleaner, but then they run into the issue of repinning and remembering what wires go where. So next you're going to take this clip on the harness that's labeled stator. And you're just going to plug it right in like so. You next have your four wires here for your timing pickup. So you're going to take the black with the red and the black. And you're going to put these two right through. And then you're going to take your blue and white and your red and white and plug these in as well. Next up we have the coil. So you can take the coil provided, slide it right over the plug, and you'll feel it click in. You can push it down. It'll be nice and well. And then you're going to have a green and a black on the back head of the coil. And take the green wire, slide it over, and the black wire, slide down the black side like so. The last part of the back half of the ATR harness here is going to be your brake light setup. Now each wire is going to be labeled. So left signal is orange. Your right signal is going to be the light blue. You're going to have a green with a yellow tracer wire on it. That's going to be your brake light. Let's see if you can get that. You're going to have your black light, which is your drive light or your running light. And you have the three green wires, which are your grounds. Now, depending on, I'll spread them out here for you can see. Depending on what light you have, um, the schematics are going to be a little different. So for your OEM light, you're going to use all three grounds, the drive light, the brake light, and your blinkers. If you have a... Uh, our TRS flush mount tail light or the R6, you're only going to need one of the grounds. The rest of it you can match up to the schematics on our website or wherever you bought your light from. One of our common questions is what is this plug in the middle of the harness? Um, this is actually for the, if you were to use the OEM fuel pump, which we wouldn't recommend. This has a green, a brown with a white tracer, and a black wire. Um, if you're trying to use the OEM fuel pump, the Honda Ruckus fuel pump, you'd have to wire in a flasher relay in order to make it pump and give it a pulse in order for it to feed the carb. Um, we highly recommend using the Makuni vacuum fed fuel pump. It's a lot more efficient and it's easier to use and set up. Now when wiring or running these wires, I'll say, through the frame here, you're going to want to lift up, make sure your tank bolts are out. You're going to lift up your tank and slide this under just like you would with your factory harness. And it's going to sit down nice and flush like so. There we go. Now I just want to point out that once you put the tank down on it, you'll see that this fuel pump wire that you're not going to use is kind of a nuisance and in the way. This is one of the only wires that we recommend that you can actually cut off without running into any issues throughout the harness. You can either cut it close down here and tape each one off and then you can tuck it under or you can fold this up, tape it together like so and then just tuck it under your take for now and it keeps it still clean look. So we just noticed that the uh, asshat that gave us the donor bike here decided that he wanted to cut the fuel sending unit off, which a lot of people do because they don't intend on using the fuel indicator light that would be right here. Um, if you do have this, you go let the wires run through and come up here and I'll explain later how you would plug it in to work for the low fuel indicating light.